Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use my mill scale 94 gallon offset to make these monster beef ribs. Hallelujah. Stick around. So I grew up in the deep south. I grew up on pork, sweet barbecue. I didn't know what beef was. I moved to Texas when I was 13. And at some point I went down to Lockhart, I went into Black's and I had a beef rib. I took one bite and I'll never forget my head snapped back. That salt and pepper bite on that amazing beef. That was like nothing I had ever tasted before. And that was the aha moment when I learned barbecue is what I wanna do. This is the king of barbecue, it's undisputed. People talk about the brisket being king, brisket's great. There is nothing that can stand up to a beef rib. What we have here today, these are 44 farms, gorgeous beef ribs. These are also known as short ribs or plate ribs, one, two, three, A cut. These are the big ones. When you see people talk about dino bones, there's three bones. This is the ones that you want. Not to be confused with chuck ribs, which are also really good. Um, these are tough to find at times, but these are the big ones. So thanks to 44 Farms for providing us with these. Uh, they just have amazing, gorgeous cattle, a never ever product. Love, love, love these beef ribs. This is gonna be real simple. If this were pork ribs, we'd pull the membrane off the back, but beef ribs don't eat like a pork rib. With a pork rib, when you bite it, you actually feel that membrane if you don't pull it. You're gonna pull all this meat off at the end, so I leave the membrane. Um, I used to pull it off, but when you leave it, I think they cook better, it keeps the bones together helps the draw. You can take it off if you want, but I don't think it's needed. A little towel here. So we're just gonna trim a couple things. You wanna remove all this hard fat, which is here and here, and you'll be left with silver skin. Now you can take the silver skin off if you want. Uh, in wild game, it's very important to remove the silver skin because that brings gaminess. In beef, you don't have to do it. I'm gonna take it off of these, but you could just remove the hard fat, season them and put them on. So let's get to trimming. Super sharp knife. Got a flexible uh, boning knife here, and I'm just gonna just kind of lay it flat and go along, you know, just along uh, the ribs here, and just kind of shave this stuff off. Be careful because uh, you can create some pretty big divots. So again, you only need to remove this hard fat; the rest will be optional. could stop at this point you could season them and you could put them on the pit but we're actually going to go ahead and remove this silver skin right here as you can see i've got it completely trimmed and ready to roll we're going to load the pit up with a bunch but i'm going to go ahead and season this one for you so you don't have to stick around and be bored I'm gonna use our holy cow. This is a central Texas beef rub. It's mostly salt and pepper, a little bit of garlic. So if you don't know this, Texas barbecue is known to be just salt and pepper. Although I'll tell you, I know a lot of barbecue joints in Austin and a lot of my buddies there add a little something else sometimes. But use whatever seasoning you want. Heck, you can just use salt and pepper. Get you a 16 mesh pepper and some, some kosher salt and you're good to go, or use whatever rub is near and dear to your heart. But this was the first rub I developed, trying to be all things Texas, so you guys probably know holy cow by now. I'm gonna go pretty liberal, because this is a big cut of meat. And I would love for this to have 15 to 30 minutes to adhere. Heck, you could even do this the night before. The great thing about this cook is we're gonna get it done during the day. Uh, we got a busy day at the meat church, so I'm gonna actually going to pat this on and I'm going to just put them in the pit. And then I've got several other racks uh, that I've got to prepare. If you're going to fire up the pit, we got to make it worthwhile. So we're going to cook like four racks of these beef ribs today and feed the crew. By the way, my team's super happy anytime I say, hey, y'all are about to get beef ribs. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on. I got the mill scale running 250 degrees with post oak because post oak is how we do it in Texas. Put them on right here. 
I'm going to prepare uh, three other racks, season them, put them on, and we'll see y'all in a little bit. It smells awesome out here. Uh, this post oak fire had been running about 250. Smells killer in the outdoor kitchen as usual. But I love this rig. Uh, don't be intimidated if you've never run a fire on something like this before. The mill scale has a huge fire box and it draws amazing. But I'll give you a little fire management tip. I like to keep on hand a few different sizes of wood. I've got smaller to bigger pieces. So this is a great tool for you when you're running a fire, you don't always want to throw in, you know, a big chunk. Uh, if you just want to bump your temp quickly, you know, go with smaller pieces. But you guys see here, we're running post oak. Hickory would have been a good choice for this, but I told you, post oak is what we do in Texas. Let's check in. Uh, it's been over four hours. We haven't done anything to these ribs. Whoo! Dang, those look good. The bark is starting to develop. You see they're starting to sweat as well. The bones are starting to protrude. Uh, they're not ready to wrap yet. They're still, you know, still really firm, but they're looking really, really good. Y'all always ask me, what's this for? If this piece of wood is not warming up. We're not cooking this. This is acting as a fire block. And this is our water pan that we've got going over here. So, man, these are looking great. I'm going to hit them with a little cider vinegar spritz uh, since they're looking, you know, just a hair dry, not too much. And for those of you that are going to ask me, this is a hog sprayer. You can get it at like a feed store. I like it because you can like reach out and really, really get somebody with the spritz. You'll quit buying those little $2 Walmart spritz bottles. All right, let's close her back up. We're probably cooking at least eight hours. Kind of depends, maybe nine, we'll see. We're gonna check back in, probably wrap them in a couple hours, and then we're gonna cook these babies into their jiggly tender. So stick around, see y'all in a little bit. Wish y'all could smell this. It's like unbelievable uh, in this kitchen right now, but you'll just have to take my word for it. It's been about six and a half hours. Woo! Ain't mad about that. Mm. Those look good. Look at that. The bark is set up beautifully. Uh, I temped these a minute ago. They're temping at like 175, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap them. And I'll tell you, wrapping is actually optional on beef ribs. Sometimes I just take them all the way through the cook and get like a super bark. So it's up to you. But I'm gonna wrap an unwaxed butcher paper that I have uh, sprayed with a little bit of cider vinegar to make it more pliable. Um, you could wrap in foil. The cook would speed up if you did that, but you kind of lose some of your bark. So if you wrap in foil at the end of the cook, you should pull them out and put them back on the pit to try to get some of that bark back. But I'm going unwaxed butcher paper here and just wanna wrap it tight. That in our Mito Bandito butcher paper. I'm gonna throw these back on. I'm thinking these are gonna go maybe another two hours or so. Much like a brisket, you're going to probe tenderness. Uh, brisket's normally around 200, 203 degrees. Beef ribs for me, I like to take higher, maybe like 210 into where they're kind of jiggly. So uh, I'm gonna wrap these other three and can't wait for two hours to elapse because this is the best barbecue meal you'll ever have. All right guys, the beef ribs have been cooking just over 10 hours. I know they're done because I just checked them, but I like to feel, make sure they're nice and squishy. That's kind of a, a, kind of a cue, but instant read thermometer key in between the bones and we're registering like 209, but I mean, they're just probe tender. There's nothing there. So I know they're done. I'm gonna pull these off. We're gonna rest them for about 45 minutes and then it's time for supper. All right, guys, as you can see, we've unwrapped three racks. I saved one to unwrap for you guys. And man, whew, tender, smells good. This cook was so simple. It was about 10 hours total. You know, we ran them straight in the mill scale without doing anything until we wrapped them in butcher paper at like 172-ish internal temperature. The cook couldn't be any easier. The hardest thing about this cook is finding the beef ribs. So thanks again to 44 Farms for hooking us up with their amazing beef. And this butcher paper is just soaked. I get asked a lot, do you put beef towel on your stuff? No, this just comes from the cook. Whew. Look at that. All 
my dog Dolly is out here because she knows what time it is. All right, little girl. Okay, here we go. Like, oh man, these suckers are tender. Let's see if we can get a pull here. Yeah, you know, we didn't pull the membrane, but still going to be super easy to pull these bones. Golly. You know they're cooked right then. So remember, that membrane is still on there, but when you pull the bones out like that, it's going to make it super simple. Why are you licking my leg? Uh, again, Dolly knows what's up. So, you know, let's just give these a, a pretty good cut right here. I'd love to hold up a rib for you, but I just slid the bones right out. My goodness, look at that. Golly. Let's uh, cut that off there. Actually, what I should have done is kind of took that membrane off the bottom so we can just get that out of the way. See how easy that was? Wham. Again, here we go. Man, look at that. Good Lord. Love brisket, but you ain't beating this bite right here. This is a big time shun slicer for those of you that are gonna, those of you that are gonna ask me. And I'm gonna get me a little nugget right here. God, man, these look good. The fat's just rendered out there. Look, that bite right there, you ain't beating that. That is the king of barbecue, undisputed heavyweight champion. Come on. I ain't mad at it. That's so tender. I probably let it, should have let it cool some more, but that's my problem making cooking videos. All right, guys, the mill scale ran like a dream. Again, thanks to, thanks to 44 Farms, again, for this amazing beef. Thank you to you guys for watching. You guys have been crushing our channel lately. If you like this stuff, like and subscribe. We'll see y'all next week.